rules. Okay, yes, you must do this. Okay. Helpful when rapid changes are needed. Of course, you have to assume that the learner has already learned to follow rules. That's an important thing because a lot of people have learned that rule following doesn't help them. Okay. <laughs> Contingency shape takes a while. All right. You want to run into those reinforcers and those punishers yourself? It's going to take you a little bit of time to get to get that behavior up to up to speed. All right. Um, so this is why teaching works. This is one of those. Actually, I should say instruction. This is why instruction works. And you heard my lovely screaming cat in the background. He's dying to come into the room. So anyway. Um, so contingency shape can and do take time. So rules will help you get get through something a lot quicker. Uh, when consequences are delayed or intermittent, the rules will help you come into contact and to make sure that you're eventually going to come into contact with them. If I don't put those rules out there, uh, then you're kind of not going to know if what you're doing is right because you're, the, the consequences are delayed or the reinforcers are delayed or the punishers are delayed, you know, that type of thing. So following those rules helps you come in contact with stuff. My example with this one, believe it or not, is actually, once again, guess what? Woodworking! Yay! Um, but, like, finish. Right? So the finish that you put on a, on a project when you're done. Right. So, the, you know, some people call it varnish, some people call it whatever they, they want to call it, but um, there's all sorts of different types of finishes. Well, some of those finishes um, take forever to set up, and by set up I mean dry and um, become shiny and do all those things. So, uh, what happens is, is that you can do the first two, three, four coats before you get to that final coat where you're really going to get a nice polish on it, nice sheen on it, and that type of thing. But if you buggered up step one, you're not going to know about it, believe it or not. You're not going to know about it until you're on step five, unless you're following the rules, right? So in other words, if you forget to fill the grain, which is the little porous, you know, there's the, uh, in really hard woods, there's this porous part of the wood, and the, the grain actually has gaps in it, and it's where the water travels through the tree. But those gaps can look really awful on a finished product. If that Think of like a violin or a guitar. You notice how they look so shiny and so smooth? They're like baby's butt smooth or glass smooth. That's because one of the things that's happened is a grain filling process. They've filled that grain before they start putting the finish on. Now, if you don't fill the grain, you know, that first coat of finish, the second coat, the third coat, the fourth coat, the fifth coat, it's going to look beautiful. It's going to look just fine. And then you get to that last coat and you're buffing things out, right? And you're working on, and you've been at this point on like, let's say a violin or a guitar, you've been actually working on that finish for probably 25 or 30 days at the, at, by the time you get to coat five. And so you're buffing away, you're doing all this stuff and you're making it work. And then you get done and you're like, wow, it's nice and shiny. And then you take it out in the sunlight and all you see are these little ripples, little tiny ripples, little divots here and there. Right? And you're like, son of a... <laughs> and what the issue is, you didn't fill your grain. So the, the, the finish soaks in to those little bits and spots and those lower, lower pieces. And um, the issue is, is that it looks like crap. But you didn't know that because you weren't following the rule ahead of time. So it took you forever, in this case, a month of lots of labor-intensive um, um, labor work to find out that you screwed something up a little while ago and now you've got to do a lot more work to fix it. So again, the consequences are delayed or, imminent or intermittent there and you use the rule to, to, to bridge the gap. So now when any of you are trying to do a French polish technique, you know, fill your grain. So I'm giving you all these useful rules. Hopefully some of you will become woodworkers and you'll actually use it. All right. <laughs> Helpful when behavior will lead to severe punishment. Think of the red rocks. That's all I have to say. All right. Make rules as specific as possible in terms of behavior, right? circumstances, and consequences. <laughs> Be clear. I mean, if you're vague, then rules are pointless. You know, that I, I just hate the you know, do this or else. It's like, really? Or else what? Come on. At least tell me what the hell is going to happen. Same thing with circumstances. Under certain situations, one behavior may be okay. Under a different situation, that behavior may not be okay. Tell me what it is. Make it clear. Right. As I said, you know what? Confusion. Right? This will lead to no reinforcement and can decrease rule following behavior because don't forget that we are getting reinforced for following the rules. Right? So there is that behavior, that separate behavior that's happening every time you're, you're learning to do another behavior. So let's say I'm giving you all this advice on woodworking and you go out in the shop and you try it and it doesn't work. Well, guess what? You're not going to follow rules for me anymore. So I'm punishing rule following behavior. So that's why I'm actually telling you real things. Right. Make reinforcement as immediate as possible. You can do this using deadlines. Right? Uh, some people think deadlines are discriminative stimuli and they are in a sense, but really what it is is about just making a, a setting up a situation where the reinforcers are going to be delivered. 
right? And it works surprisingly well. Um, there's a, a fun reference in your book that goes through that, so I'll leave you to, to look through that. But the idea is that adding, simply adding a deadline um, can change um, the, the probability that the behavior is going to be done. Um, some of you are actually seeing that with this course because I don't have deadlines on when to complete your uh, exams. However, there are deadlines on earning the maximum possible points in the discussion. Right? So you don't have a deadline to complete your exam. You can complete it at the end of the quarter, but you will not make, earn extra points um, in the in the discussions. Right? So the so there's kind of a deadline there, but not really. And some people aren't as worried about the points from the discussion, um, so they're just hanging out on their exams, and that's okay. Yeah, it's up to them. You know, but that then that's what the rule is. It's really clear. Um, so it's really clear. The consequences, the state circumstances are all there. There is a kind of a deadline if you want to get your points for the. For the lecture, you have to have your exams done. Goals, all right. Really, goals are just special cases of rules, right? They're basically motivational factors um, to kind of help you um, get to a certain point. And we're gonna talk about motivation um, in an upcoming lecture. Um, and the idea is that um, they can help change the value of reinforcers and by achieving a particular goal, um, it might actually be a reinforcer in into itself, right? Um, they do similar things as rules. Like I said, they're really just special cases of rules. It's just, it specifies a particular instance of behavior, really. Right? So there are former use rules, but they're used when you're trying to achieve a long-term objective. Um, I'm trying to think of an example here, like building a set of cabinets. That's not a quick thing, right? So I've been working on that quite a while. So I set individual goals, right? So I can't just say, ooh, I want my cabinets done by this date. Yeah, right, uh-huh, that's not gonna work, right? There's like 50,000 things you need to do in order to get those cabinets finished. Um, so I'm working on step one, step two, step three, step four, and I set goals each week. Here's what I want to do this week, right? So I've broken down a lot of goals to kind of bring in some additional reinforcers there. Okay. And the long-term objective, of course, is going to be having this nice, beautiful kitchen, which I'm almost done with. I'm getting really excited. Right? Self-talk is an example of a rule for now. Right? Um, so telling myself what, uh, you, know, you know, just giving myself stealth statements. Ooh, this piece of wood is looking good. Or, ooh, the door for this cabinet is looking great. Right, That's my rule for now. Um, I, I can even give myself specific rules of, ooh, I'm going to focus on this particular task today. Right, And practice um, where we can set up that goal for later. Right, So I'm going to do 15 of these things. And then that is going to get me to my long-term goal of actually having my cabinets, right? So the self-talk kind of gets you focused on right now, and the practice really kind of sets it up for success later. Yeah. Again, just like, just like rules, be specific in terms of behavior, consequences, settings, right? Use mastery criteria. Surprise, surprise, I'm using mastery criteria for you guys, gotta hit that 90%, right? Make it clear about what you need to do in order to be proficient with that particular behavior. You can start to see how this would be really useful in sports and those types of things. Make them public. Right? If you have a certain set of goals, tell people about them. Of course, there's some criteria about telling folks about it. You want it to be somebody that's going to help you. Um, you want it to be somebody that's going to be around um, and might actually reinforce you when you do achieve your goals. But the idea is make those goals public. Post them on a wall or something. Post them in your house. Post them on the refrigerator. I had a buddy of mine. He actually had all these lifelong goals, things that he wanted to do. And it wasn't really bucket list type stuff. It was rather pragmatic. It was like pay off Bill X. And what he did was he actually put these things all around his house. So when you went over to his house, you would see this stuff and you could ask him, hey, so-and-so, I'm not gonna tell his name because you'll see him, you might see him someday. Anyway, hey, so-and-so, did you get your bill paid off? Because on the wall right there, it says that you were supposed to have that done by June or whatever. Or, hey, are you getting close to that? Or, hey, maybe we shouldn't spend money. To, maybe we shouldn't go out partying tonight because, you know, it looks to me like you've got this big thing that you're trying to achieve on the wall, right? So it, it, it implies these social consequences and that he, that he can set himself up to get punished or reinforced for um, achieving his goals from other people. Deadlines, right? Um, it makes it more likely that you'll be successful. And give feedback. For your self-management stuff, you guys should all be graphing this stuff every day, right? Because that feedback can be completely reinforcing. Right? And just like the public stuff, make a public commitment. Say what you're going to achieve by when. Right? And that tends to put additional pressure on you to make it happen. All right. There you go. Talk to you soon.